Greetings family. Welcome to the Grand Rising Collective. My name is Kyle Dixon, co-host, educator, and entrepreneur for 20 years. Grand Rising Collective is here is to cultivate greatness in ourselves and our community. And my name is Kai Day Bentley, co-host, educator, and entrepreneur for over 20 plus years. My contribution to Grand Rising Collective is to help cultivate that greatness in ourselves and the community through impactful discussions, seminars, and webinars with my co-host, Kyle Dixon. They're selling that and they're telling people because YouTube, if people don't know YouTube, you can get reoccurring income off of it. And I get it. But I'm telling you, you have to pick a lane, understand that lane, and then you got to know how to finance it. Because I'm like, and this stuff is not cheap because then you got to think. The print-on-demand model is good if you're just like, well, I want to test out my market. And I'm okay with giving up profit because first I want to sell. Mm. Now, if you're going to do the whole old route where it's like, I'm going to just bet on myself. We're going to get this stuff printed. Then we're going to go out and just sell it. If you got the selling expertise on that, you go do that. That's a more riskier model because you can have product in your house for how long knows mm. how long. Because mm. Then you got to know the seasons. Did I just get T-shirts for this season? Do I get hoodies? And if you don't have an audience already or you don't know who you're selling to, which is why they tell you, do the business plan, do the avatar. They're telling you, the, the OGs are telling you to do this stuff because it helps you yeah. in the long run. Mm -hmm. Just putting it out there and you haven't done the intricate groundwork, I'm telling you, you're going to have to regurgitate back mm -hmm. and start from back. You're going to have to go back. It's either you do it the way where it's symmetry, the old way, the learning, the knowing you're doing the stuff right the first time and then you go into it and it's a smooth sailing or you're going to have to, you know, jump back, jump back. Even if you make some money, jump back to the original, <laughs> jump back to the crash. So you got to jump back. Okay, we made money, but then we lost it. We did this, but then we got to go. It's going to be a, a tuck, tug and pull if you don't do the, the fundamentals, right, yeah. of anything. And I'm just... Urging people, learn the fundamentals. It helps you so much. Yeah, I, I, we, ha we haven't talked about money, right? No, we haven't even talked about that. <laughs> yes. We just talking we about talk the about process money. of just setting up the process of creating, you know, the the creating the, the product, or creating the shirt, creating the fashion. Like you said, there's tears, there's couture, there's yeah. urban streetwear, right? There's direct to market, right? Merch, man, that's you just you just did a you just did a a, a, a TED talk right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to tell people like I don't I'm, I want it to not I want it to be easy. I want people I, I would love to pay it forward. Like no, I don't want you to make my same mistakes and have to go through all this and trying to. No, I want you to be better. Like better than me. Like get it to be going faster the market. You know I have that mindset. Like I don't feel like people need to go through my same issues to learn. It's like no, you're gonna make your own mistakes. You're going to make your own mistakes in anything that you do because you're you. You're, you're, you have your own yes. whatever, your own life, your own circumstances. You're going to make your own mistakes. I just tell people, don't make mistakes that you can read in a book or watch a video on. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> make new mistakes. That's why I tell my students, yeah. make new mistakes. Like The old mistakes have already been done. You can ask somebody about those, but make new mistakes. Yeah. That yes. You're pushing the the uh, the barriers you know it's like oh we we, we, we didn't know about that one because we had never really go, gone into that yet so yeah so yeah exactly exactly it's, it you're down. gonna make mistakes you're going to make yeah that's, and that's what i want to say just to add on what you're saying q as an entrepreneur as a business person as a person in general you're going to you're going to make mistakes you just don't want to make costly mistakes that leave your business being at zero or where you can't recover from you know yes yeah yes because you're yes. going to do it it's going to happen yeah you know, it's just recognize what it is be able yes. to it and move on. But if you make a costly mistake where it it, it crushes your business, yeah, you now may, it's you like may not ever come back. And if you or if you come back, it may be so long that people for, have already forgotten. You know what I mean? Like so, it's, yes, it's a, it's a balance. Yeah, I just so yeah, we just talked about creating. Then I haven't gotten to website. Oh my god, I haven't oh, even talked about oh, marketing. Oh, 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 yeah, go ahead. <laughs> But go ahead, go ahead. Ask, ask me more questions. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, because family, uh, you're gonna have to donate, uh, kick the like, uh, donate some dollars. Uh, he's going into his TED talk, and everybody needs to be compensated for his information. So, we're going to that, yeah, we're gonna hold off on that. Kyrie, I know Kyrie got. 
we we at the question. we at the top of the hour. Q, do we have? Yeah, your that's question? what I'm saying. I'm like, look, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, y'all had a school question, so I'm like, no, I don't want to keep this. Like, let me. <laughs> I want to take over the show. Nah, no, this is your show, brother. This is your show. This is we highlight. Mm. Oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Yo, we got man. about 15 more minutes though. 15 more minutes because you know they yes. don't have to, have to they're gonna have to come to our class, Grand Rising politically urban class for that. Like oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that yeah, seriously. I, yeah, so you touched on this already, Q. I'm first of all, let me say this. I am I'm inspired by your work, brother. Um I am I am literally inspired. There's so many things that resonate with me that uh, we connect with because your experience is similar to mine trying to run four teams, uh, going through the whole IP intellectual property, going through the whole yeah. important of an EIN, employee identification yeah. number, going in with, with the old school with regards to your business plan, going through it methodically through the foundation. Finding it. There's so many things you resonate on, brother. I, I, I thank you for being on this platform, and this platform is yours. Uh, and we, like we say with all our guests, Cal, especially with Q, we, I mean, we have to do part two because all of this, <laughs> this I'm serious, because the, re, and, you know, I get, I get real when I'm, when I'm passionate, you, you're really hitting, you're hitting brother, you're hitting, um, all this can't be done in a sound bite. All this stuff can't be, you know, all this education. Yeah. That's can't another be thing. In an yeah. Hour. yeah. This whole microwave mentality joint where you're expecting to be able to educate a populace who have been programmed and indoctrinated with all this false information, expecting this to be eliminated in just an hour or these little tidbits. It's not going to work. This is what Cal is talking about in regards to TED Talks. We need to come together as a community and really have some sessions, some classes, some courses, like just yeah. like they do in school to educate our community on what's really going on. So anyway, this platform is yours, Q. You talk about, I have questions. Um, you mm -hmm. mentioned it already, but for the audience and to, to give further breakdown is why do you feel or how important was it for you to create your own images? Why were you led or felt empowered or emboldened or whatever that emotion came from to start your own image? Why was it important for you to do mm -hmm. this, what you're doing right now? Thank why? you. I appreciate you. It was important because I felt like there were other black males like me, you know, that I think, cause I feel like as black men were taught, it's either, yeah, either you're, you're what's it now, the new term, toxic masculinity, you're not like, we. I've been told like, oh, we only want white women. We only want this. We, only, we, we don't want our women. We don't want, you know, we're not big on our community. We don't care. We left our women and we don't want them anymore. And we're just, leaving them to themselves. They have to do it by themselves and we only want our own thing and we don't care about our people. So I'm just here to be like, okay, there's, there's noise and yes, there is some truth, right? But I just want to show that there's a lot of good and bad. There's a lot of good brothers. Like there's a lot of just also just good black people. Like it's what's on BET is not everything. Like there's so many, like everything, like I get it. Media is very important. Like some people say, well, why why can't I go back to the old days where you looked up to your aunt, uncle, your family right. to really imitate stuff? Why does it now have to be the entertainers? Well, to some people, that was mm. the imitation. That's the only thing they had because they don't know what, you know, and there's certain things that, you know, my dad didn't even teach me, right, that I'm learning as a young man now. So it's like, there's sometimes they weren't given that opportunity and it's hard to say you know the two parent um involved structure is a privilege mm. and it should not be mm. but it's a privilege like mm. me and my friends like all the black men i know in my life have have some parental issue we all have some missing piece with our parents disconnect issues i've not met I've, i think i've only met i don't think I don't think we were, fr I think every black man I've come into contact with and we've been friends or even just somehow passed by, we've had some parental issue, some parental lack, background, something. And and it's not to say, and, and it's not to say they all went down the path of selling drugs and abusive to be, like there are some people that are still, still amazing through those things. Mm -hmm. And I just want to show that we need each other. 
I feel like we just point the finger at each other and everybody's just laughing. That's my own personal mm. opinion. I feel like black men did this, black women did this, we're pointing the finger, you did this to me, I did this to you, and everybody is just waiting to either capitalize on those stories, waiting to capitalize on our anger of division. I mean, but the real the real um revolution comes when we're like when when we I think there was an image that where there was black people the a board was on that back and white people was playing it and they said the game stops when we get up. Right? It was a <laughs> meme that I saw on social media, right? Mm -hmm. The game stops when we get up. Yes. And I just feel like it's more of a mental game now. Mm. Because like you said, people think, oh, getting into fashion. Oh, I'm seeing people talking about they're making this amount of money and oh yeah, we can just get in here. And that's it. We ain't got to do all that stuff. But no, there's still the fundamentals. There's still craftsmanship. And I think there's still the details, right? The success is in the details, right? Oh, I could just see. Oh, I saw this. Oh, yeah, we about to make all this. It's like, no, it's still. But I think to go more into your question, I just want to show that Black men and women, we can do stuff together. There is unity in our community. There is value to that. And in fashion, I'm not really seeing that. I'm not seeing a brand that's going to focus on that. Like, I see a lot of mm. Black brands that want to do pop culture, that want to do stuff that's relevant, hip-hop culture, which is mm. great. But I don't really see people getting into the political realm because, like my mentor said, Q, I don't know. When you start talking about bringing us together and you want to put all this image about Black men and women and power and all this stuff, you know, the 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 I, I don't know. It's very hard... It's kind of like when people say the, it's the, I guess maybe I'll go to a more hip hop example. You want to be Jay-Z, you want to be most deaf, right? Mm. It's like, you got to pick. Mm. You got to pick. I'm trying to, I, I want it to be an example where it's like, no, we don't have to pick. Even being right. that brother from active, actively black, it's like, no, you got to pick. You want to be Talib Kweli or you want to be Kanye? Mm. You got to pick, right? And I'm trying to fit, trying to ahead. maybe blend the mind together where we can get our marketing out there and put our art out there and still be like, no, nah, we pro black is over here. Like, no, we don't subscribe to all that over here and we make your money and we're successful because it's like, well, either you're going to be the black man that's knowledgeable, that's got the books all in the library, you know, and, and is knowledgeable and, and, and have your small space or you're going to be out there toxic, but you got all the money and all the fame like. It just makes us, it always makes me feel like we have to pick either success. It's, it's like either to be dumb and successful or combative and successful or horrible for the culture and successful, or we're going to be knowledgeable and unseen. Right, right. That's the dynamic they try to create. And that's it, right? That part, right? You said right there. Because all the examples you gave in the hip hop uh, analogies, they're all yeah. legends. Most deaf, yeah. Jay, Talib, Common, they all, they all successful. They all legends. It's just that again, what lane are you in? Yeah. I love I got love for Jay just like I got love for my man most. You know what I'm saying? Yasin. You know what I'm saying? And I got yeah. love for I live just as much as I got love for TI. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I, I like both of them, you know. Uh and shout out to the sisters too, you know, MC Light, Queen Lie, you yeah. know. Lie, like, I tell you. like, like for real, you know. So yeah, man. Brother, yeah, they, 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 the whole um, what do you call it? Um, uh, what's it? Uh, not uh, positively poverty, like po like it's like nah, yeah. have to be, we, we it ain't like I'm positive and I'm impoverished. No, I can have prosperity and also be positive at the same time. Like, yeah, that's not sold to us, but I want to show that yes, we can talk about really things that are important and uplift each other and still be successful and still build empires off of that. It doesn't right. have to built off of negativity or this dramatization uh, of something negative. I just I just believe we can create stories about prosperity and being positive. Because some people feel like, well, if it doesn't have drama in it, it's boring. It's like, no, it can be something educational and positive. It's like, oh, that's boring. Like, you want to talk about uplifting people and you want to talk about positivity? It's like, it's like, no, nah, like, where's, where's the blood? Where's the violence? Where's the killing? Where's the... You know, where's the betrayal? You know, where's all that? You know, we need that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they don't understand. They don't get it. Yeah. I understand. I mean, there's beauty in all of it, right? We Because, you know, we all recognize there's beauty in all of it. But like you said, yeah. we've been raised as a as a society. We've been raised on blood, 
and violence because we have been vi been been violated yeah. in violence and blood, yeah. and betrayal and drama. And be, unfortunately, people have been raised on that, so they figure that's all that that there is, but there really isn't. And it's like, oh man, you know, like it's it really is an interesting mindset, like you said earlier. It really is a mindset, a shift, a paradigm shift of who we are truly and what we have been conditioned to be yeah in reference of our colonizers you know what i'm saying yeah like, let's keep it let's keep it funky you know what i'm saying yeah. like that's our colonizers have taught us their ways and we yeah. have adapted that as that's our way of life oh that's culture that's called cool. yeah that's a culture but that's not our culture originally we have adapted that culture but that's not originally our culture yeah know? that's that's you know, the, our, yeah yeah you know. so you know, as much as like, and real quick, and note, and note this, I want to, because I want to share this, because I think Yonkers, right? So DMX, right? Much respect right. to DMX's spirit, his family, his children. But that was a troubled brother, and he was working through yeah. trouble. And that's the, yeah. but that's the beauty of DMX. The beauty of DMX is not that he stayed that, that he was, he was trying to find a sense of balance, emotional balance and stability in his life. And he was constantly on that journey. That's the beauty of DMX, that he was vulnerable enough to share that with us as people and to say, here's why I went through the craziness that I went through. I'm trying to get myself in a better predicament spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. And that is my journey in life right now. And please don't judge me for that. But just mm -hmm. recognize where I, I'm not I'm not where I think I, I should be, but I'm better off than where I was. And that's the beauty. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't like he wasn't even saying, like, yeah, I sold drugs and y'all should, too. He was never about that. He was like, no, I, had, I I just felt I had to do that to survive and be where I'm at now, but I'm trying to correct that. Yeah, yeah. I think you get that sometimes misconstrued. Like sometimes even the younger generation when the old people, when the, when the older generation has to say, no, don't do this. Like I was even watching a video, an interview with Nick Cannon and he was um, talking about his story and he was saying how Jamie Foxx, when he was around him, he said when Jamie Foxx, I think, signed again, gave him money for like $150,000, I think, for a job he did, he went and bought the same Range Rover that Jamie Foxx bought. And Jamie Foxx said, Don't do that, dude. I make millions. Like, don't do that. Like, why would you buy the same car? I'm, I'm a multi man. Like, don't do that. And he did <laughs> it. And, <then laughs> and then he said, Six months into having a car, it got totaled. And he was just like, he was like, you know, he warned me. He was like, don't do it. He's like, no. And he was like, <laughs> but I think that of like, it's like, no, y'all did it, right? Y'all sold this to give it. It's like, no, we're telling you, we had to feel like we had to do that for circumstances. Like one thing I appreciated that I think everybody came up with Jay, right? I think in my experience, I've never heard Jay say sell drugs. I think even one of his songs, I appreciated. He said, like I sold you, like I told you, sell drugs. Nah, Hope did that. Just hopefully you don't have to go through right, that. Right. I was raised in the projects, roaches and rats, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm telling you my story. It's it's different for somebody endorsing something, mm -hmm. but somebody just sharing mm -hmm. what their experience was. I've never personally heard Jay-Z said, y'all need to sell mm -hmm. drugs or whatever. I've only heard him tell his story, never right? And with DMX too, I've never heard, I've never heard DMX come out and say, Yo, y'all need to be in the hood, sell drugs, do this, whatever. Okay. I've never heard him say that. It's just, yo, his mother, what is it? Father abandoned him. His mm -hmm. mother kicked him out when he was 13. Used to mm -hmm. beat him, right? Young brother, right? Lost in the world, right? He had a mentor, I think, that drugged him or whatever. I think his story was he said when he was 13, he was he was introduced to crack. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. I'm like, I don't know too many people that then can say they turned around to become. One of the greatest rappers to ever, like no, hey, <laughs> no, like he. I mean, you you were exposed to crack at thirteen. Some people, you know, uh, remain addicts for the rest of their life. I mean, you you go from that, you abandonment, right? Not mm -hmm. knowing. I mean, your dad abandoning you, your mother abusing you, kicking you out at a young age. He said he used to. The only reason why he resonates with dogs is because those are the animals that resonated with him when he was homeless. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. you take that and you turn around. You become, I mean, one of the greatest ever. I mean, especially at a time where Jay Z was hot. They said you and him were, and then you have what is it? Him and Tupac are the only ones to have two albums in a year that was number one while incarcerated, and then you're also the number one artist for four straight albums or something like that. I mean, so all these records, and then the tale. The tale is right. The hood tale is that Def Jam rotted his coattails, and that's the only reason why they even were surviving when he was mm -hmm. making. 
I believe that. That's the hood tale. Yeah. That's that's what people in, in, in the inner city told me. They said DMX was the only reason why Def Jam was even alive, which is why they took care of him no matter what. <laughs> that's what they told wow. me. That that was the OGs that was that. in the hip hop at that time told me that was the reason why Def Jam is even alive right now. And that's why they took care of him through his struggles and made sure because they was like he was the only one making them them hit hit hits to where they they were <laughs> to yeah, where they man. was competing. Yeah, hits. So Extra hits, man. That's what I was told. So <laughs> I can see that. I can see that, but yeah, thank you, yeah, but yeah, family, you see, and thank you for Quinnell for that for that history too, brother, because that that again, because I'm the generation that came up with X. You're like afterwards, but you're you know you're in that yeah. community, so so, but it's just like yeah, man, that's important to recognize. It's like these folks who went through these things, you know, they didn't stay there; they were working through that, man. He was he was working through that. Jay worked through his that four 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 album is one of my favorite albums of Jay, man, because he's working through his his emotional distress and trauma as a man, you know, and it's just like. He has distance on it to be able to look back and say, wow, like, I I, I wish I could have made better decisions back then. But here's why I, I didn't. I, yeah. I didn't have those 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 people around me to kind of prompt certain ideas. And and I didn't have certain financial stability and the environment I came up in. And so, you know, it, you know, it, it, and it's not like blaming people. It's not like saying, what was me? It's just saying, yo, I, how do I know when you don't know? How do you know what you don't know? Right. You yeah. Know you know, yeah, man. And like you're saying, with, with, with the fashion, going back into fashion, you creating these great pieces. It's like, yo, I'm putting out imagery that's going to make people think, that's going to uplift people, that's going to put us in a, in, in a better uh, a frame frame of mind when we think about each other, because we need each other. No matter what other people say, we need each other. And that's the fundamental fact. And people can try to dance around it and... and, and yeah. <laughs> It, it, you you gonna, you're just going to cause yourself more uh, more at harm, really. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's, it, it's not meant to do it alone. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, that's the biggest trick that capitalism has taught us. It's about aloneness. And it's like, no, that's why I say to people, like, no, you need to have the Wu-Tang mentality. Mm. You got <laughs> to have, I mean, I tell people, no, there's no, you have to have the Wu-Tang mentality. Even now, like... I'm just saying any venture is to, it's to me better. Like me, it's been hard, you know, to find that exact team that we can all come up, but I would recommend right. people because, you know, somebody may just be great at the designing. They don't want to get into all the realm. Like not every person wants to get into all the realm. Some people are just like, I want to design dope stuff and that's it. That's where they stop. Right. I want to, I'm a great marketing person. That's why I said, and then even knowing like Mims, I watched his interview. He was saying he had a whole street team like to market his stuff. He just music. Like everybody doesn't hear that. Like Tyler Perry, love him, but he has a whole camera crew. Like right. everyone you can point to, G Unit was a, a team. Like everybody we can talk to, like Rockefeller, a team, like right. him, Dame, other people. And then and then Jay revealed, I remember they were saying how there was other people I didn't even know that was a part of it. He was like, all oh, most of the people he was selling drugs with. It was like, yo, like y'all want to do this music thing, and it was like, all right. Like even I remember one of my um friends, he grew up in that era. Like his brother's Vinny Idol, so his brother, Vinny. you know, produced for some of uh, for some of the for for the locks and stuff like that. So his okay. brother was big in that. Wow. And he was saying like he was like, dude, like some of some of the people that was on tour like didn't graduate high school. They were there because they had a burner, dude. Like not everybody. We were just giving some people jobs. Like dude, not everybody was qualified. Like right. like. <laughs> yeah. the locks legends locks legends you know what i'm saying like I'm saying, man. <laughs> hey, man it takes these are the hood tales i was giving i was they was like dude like everybody like in that era he was like dude like we had people on tour that was literally there for muscle like not some people didn't graduate school like we just had you there because you were muscle and some of them didn't even graduate the eighth grade he was like look there were some brothers that were literally coming out of that life and they were like here was a job that's mm -hmm. legit here and and they ran with it like it's crazy to me how Jay was like yeah like I sold like these somebody some of his business part he still work with today he used to sell drugs and I was like oh shit okay <laughs> right. <laughs> right right this is this. man man yo you no know? I right, listen yeah. we got we are an hour and a half past right we got ten minutes left sorry sorry no 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 no, no, no. we're gonna do a part two Q this is fantastic. But we want to make sure you get time to, to, to settle and all that stuff. We're going to put all this stuff together. We're going to put it up. Yes, yes, get, yes, get our final questions in for you. 
And Q, yes, give us yes. your, your tag, your, your social media handles and all yes. that. So, so Q, I have a, a two-part question that I want to ask today. Yes. Kyle, please follow up. It's a two-part, right? Mm. So, Kyle, you're 27 yeah. years old, my brother, and you mm-hmm. have the knowledge, the experience, the wisdom of someone who's well up in age. I'm 53 years old, bro, and I wish I knew what you oh, knew. Wow, really? Yes, brother. Wow. You are, I mean, God bless you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you could have fooled me. You could have fooled me. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, I'm, I'm, my, my two parts, two parts to it is right like, because it's, it's a two part question. So, I want, I want to ask you this: for young brothers growing up and sisters as well from the inner city, from our demographic, is there some advice? That you can give them because I want to tailor it tailor it into the next question that deals directly with your design business, right? Your apparel business. Uh, is there anything that comes to mind? I would say, what was your biggest challenge um, that mm. you had to face that you overcome that you feel would be beneficial to the young people growing up now who wants to spark a change through their creativity and entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, so the question, you know, you understand the question? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Yes. So I would say um, for the youngest that you can be, start to build your business and financial acumen, right? Because as a creative, while you're learning through it, right, you may have a knack for it. So mm-hmm it's a lot easier for you to work through it. Like it's a lot, it was a lot easier for me to work through drawing and art because I had the natural knack for it. I would tell you as the earliest as you can, you know, build credit, right? Back, you know, back to, to the 4-4 album where Jay-Z was like, you wanna know what's more important than blowing money in strip clubs? Credit. And it is. As the youngest age that you can get to, whether you sweeping in a barbershop, whether you're making whatever money you get into, figure out ways to start building your credit um, young, um, and start to build your financial footprint where just do bank accounts and start making record keeps of that. Because as you get older, a lot of people don't know in the credit game. I don't want to get into another credit game. Age is very important. Time, just time in it is important. And then also the payment history. And then, you know, all the inquiry. That's another thing. But the point is credit, saving your money, and finding a vehicle, whether it's a high-yield savings account, whether it's, you know, getting, you want to take, five ten percent of the money that you're making and put it into the stock market to learn like learning your business and financial acumen learning how to first of all take an idea from your mind and how to write it down and because that's what's that's what's very important you understand you you have to get other people to understand your program so you have to be able to be able to write it out in a language that other people understand right because in this world as a million person you may not have the resources but if you can craft the idea cold enough i mean I, that's just you know slang but if you can craft it great enough right where you can write out your bit that's why i say the business plan is so important when you can craft out your idea what you want to do the point of it your why where you're going if you can craft all that out you can be able to use that intellectual property that ip of writing to be able to get the resources you need whether it's through crowdfunding whether it's through investing getting somebody because having a plan right it's either one or two things you're going to have to have you're going to either have to have you need both. You need plan and you need resources. But as a person that doesn't have, right, you're going to have to most likely pick. If you don't have the resources, you need to have the plan. But even if you have the resources, you still got to have the plan, right? So either you're going to wait till you get older and have more money and more acumen in whatever you're doing and just develop the plan then, or you're going to be at your younger age, which I recommend the younger you do this, the more time you have to recover mistakes, right? Mm. Mm. you be able to write the plan, write the plan out, Get the plan and start marketing. It doesn't have to be just through money. That's not the only way marketing. And being, you're going to need some sort of, either you're going to have to have the spokesperson, that's your friend, your boy, or have a team, or you're going to have to be your own spokesperson for that plan. That's why I recommend it being a team because one person might just have a knack for being an extrovert. The introvert might be the person that's drafting up all the plans, right? So I would say for you, you would, I would say with young people, they may not, they're most likely not going to have a lot of resources. I would say, Develop your plan, your ideas, write them out, right? And be able to do now with the internet, research and find other people. If it's in close proximity to you, if it's already in your family, 
go, you know, if you have a knit family like that, talk to them, ask some questions, ask the OG questions. Please do that. It's very important. And I would say to try to either find an internet mentor that either you can draw from or find a, and, uh, or find a physical one. It's good to have both. That can be with you day to day because the internet can only go so far. You need somebody next to you that can hone you, that can be with you through life, that you could pick up the phone and call and ask questions. Mm. But you may also need the distant mentor that you can then pull from that may have, you know, the stuff that may be going on in a different region, different place where you're at, where you can pull ideas from. Right. But it all starts with the plan. Right. And you need to figure out whatever money you have, right? I understand pressure. You're going to be spending it fervently on whatever you like. Save a portion of that money and either say, okay, I'm saving it to put it in that high yield savings account that I don't touch. And then I'm going to have a little bit of that 5% or that 10% of that money and put it into whether I'm going to start learning about investing, right? Whether it's you want to do stocks, whether whatever lane you want to pick or do stocks, forex, whatever, figuring out ways to always keep your money working for you. Because you're going to have to learn that later on in life anyway. Your money has to work for you or it's dead. If it's not constantly moving, then the money is dead, right? And you as a person, as a creator, you're going to need money to create. You're going to need that resource to create, whether it's to get to the conference, whether it's to get to the events. And as your youth, there's a lot of stuff with students. You may be able to get into events for a fraction of the cost. Mm. Utilize your youth. Mm. With youth, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Mm. When you get older, people are going to start asking for money. When you're young and, and they see you're doing great things, they'll just be like, oh, yeah, we'll promote it. We'll put you on all this. And it might be for free, right? Mm. I wish I took more advantage. Like, you might be able to get into this thing just because you're a student. That's why I say leverage college. Leverage your youth. You're young. People just think, oh, my God, you're so amazing. Like, you're cute. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll do it for whatever. With the older person, they, they might come to me and say, Q, we want to check. Like, we need we we need we we need that check. The young 14-year-old that may got the same idea, they're like, oh, she's so cute. Like, yeah, we'll bring her on, whatever. Like, we'll we'll put you in position because life is about positioning, right? Life is about positioning. It's not about who's the most talented, it's about the person that is positioned well. Proximity and position. I need you to remember that. It's not about how gifted you are, it's not about how talented you are. You know that you're great because you should have that with self-worth. But life is about show and tell. People only know what you show them. So you're going to have to be able to, with that plan, right, when you take it from your mind to the application, you show, hey, I got a plan. I got this. People are more willing to help you when they see things that are well thought out. We're willing to give you money, ideas, bounce up when they see it well thought out. You're still mixed and confused and still trying to figure out it's harder to get other people on board with what you're doing. Utilize your youth, have a plan, um, and find whatever you're great at as early on as you can, because you may be like me, you may not discover until later on or when you're in your 20s, but find it as early as, as you can. So when you make your mistakes, it's a lot easier to recover because certain opportunities have certain windows in life that it may not be. There are opportunities that when, at 16, you're not going to maybe get it at 25. There's opportunities that you get at 25, you're not going to get it at 35. So you have to think your time is the asset. The time is the asset. That is the real asset. The more you utilize your youth, the earlier on you get into whatever you're trying to do, the more time you have for cover, the more windows you have for opportunity, and I feel the more opportunities you can get into other doors for whatever you're trying to get into. It doesn't mean you can't bounce back and rebound and build a business at your 30s or your 20s or your late 20s or wherever age you're at. Because Kellogg, I think the guy for Frosted Flakes, he didn't start until he was 53, right? You can build it at any time, but certain opportunities have certain time gates, windows, and you have to make sure you want all the opportunities that you can ever get for your gift. Because in this world, um, with not being a certain <laughs> racial background, uh, you're not going to always be given the distribution. You may be given the platforms now with social media, but you're not always given the marketing, the distribution. I mean, if a sister like Tiana Taylor can say she's frustrated with the industry because of the lack of distribution and marketing, right? You have to think. And she started when she was very young, right? Same formula. Yeah. Even when you look at guys that are big and big now in their 30s, they started very, very young. So they, you, the, I'll tell you, the, you, the younger you get this and you start learning, I mean, even Nick Cannon was like, he was telling Cat Williams what to do on Wild and Out, right? Young, older comedians were learning from him. And he self-funded that, right, as a right. young person. But he started when he was 10, 11, 12. Like, 
They yeah. also don't tell you that with a lot of these people that got all this money. A lot of them, they've been through the trial and area at 15, 14. He said at 19, I thought I lost everything. Will Smith, like a lot of our big giants, a lot of them started when they were young. I'm just saying, success leaves clues. That's what I would say. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Final question, Carl, and then I'll leave it over to you. Um, for, for young, for, for, could anyone start a clothing company? Uh, when uh, Could anyone start a clothing company? Number one, Q, right? For those young people, because I spoke to young people already uh, through a SYEP Summer Youth Employment Program. A lot of them had ideas and interests in the fashion industry and design industry, you know, a lot of them. So the question is, could, could they start, I think we know the answer to it anyway, but can they start a clothing company? And when would be the best time to start a clothing company uh, if there is a best time? That's my final question for you. Okay. Yes, anyone can start it, but not everyone can make it successful, right? So everyone can start it. You can get on print on demand. You can create some designs. You can put it on the internet and you can start it. You can get a website. AI is really taking over. Um, but again, it's about getting to the party that used to be. It's funny because a OG of mine told me back then we were just trying to get into the party. Right. Now getting into the party is not enough. You can be in the party, but there's now you got to maneuver who to speak to, who's in the because everybody's now in the party. <laughs> it's about <laughs> it's not enough now to get into the party and he was just like back then man he was just trying to get into the rooms man and it was just like mm -hmm. but now it's not it's not as important now it's you're in the social media rooms you're in the mix now it's like well who knows that you're in the mix now are you directly connected do you have the right people to know you're in the mix now it's it's more <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. enough to be at the dance anymore so yes you can start a brand but I would tell you if anything, in anything in life, if it's not something that you're going to, um, that you really believe in, then I wouldn't say start it. If it's like, I'm really like, no, we're going to make politically urban the example for the streetwear industry. Like, I believe that. Like, I'm going to go forth and with, regardless of the trials and tribulations and the ebbs and flows that I've had thus far, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move forward. This is going to be my thing. With anything I tell people, if you don't have that mindset, it's going to be kind of hard to really be successful in anything, right? So I would tell people, you can start it, but if it's not what you really believe on making it successful, then it's not It's not going to push. The best yeah. time, there really is no, I can say, if I want to be frank in any business, right, it's always the best time, I would say, going back to what I said earlier, when you're young, because youth, again, I mean, even that young black kid, his name is Respergo. He is him and his mother, right? He's he has a black owned clothing brand. He's young. I think he was like 15 or whatever. He went into mm -hmm. barbershops as a young kid. His mother helped him and they were going to barbershops and market the clothing, right? And some big influences were like, You're 15, right? You're you're young, you're trying to do something. Yeah, the baby. You know, he's a big rapper. Yeah, we'll put it on our page. Oh, you're young. Oh, and you're trying to do something. Yeah, we're gonna put it when people mm -hmm. gotta pay the baby thousands of dollars. People have to pay some of these rappers thousands sometimes hundreds of thousands to market mm. and they're like oh you're young yeah sure whatever like we'll put it in our video oh you're this yeah we'll put it in our i would say utilize that youth but you can start a business at any time but i would say if you really want to keen in starting when you're young and you're you're really trying to build it because i just feel like more people will be more receptive to not maybe charging you as much up front to get that audience right. or get that access than right. when you're a lot older in my opinion I agree. I agree. Children, people, people yield for children and, and, and young folk more so than they do for adults. Cause they like, well, you know, you know, you probably get on your own, but a child, you know, their, their perspective to their you know, environment, their household, you know, you may not have all the resources. So, you know, they're yeah. still depending on other people to get things done. So I agree with that. Yeah. Hey, Cal, close, close it out. So indeed, no, I, I agree with everything brother Q is saying, uh, and even stuff I disagree with, I really don't disagree. It's just more <laughs> different perspective uh, on it, on, on, on the issue. But um, Brother Q, man, we appreciate you, brother. We, we celebrate you. Thank you. I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the fly gear, y'all. Yeah, I, I appreciate got, it. Thank I got this image the on the screen right here. I couldn't get the shirt. I, got, <laughs> I appreciate you. Got you know, thank you so much. And just real quick, the brother's not sleeping because he's lazy. He's thinking. He's planning. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, black man, we can rest. Yes. Can rest. Thank I, I appreciate this shirt because, right, a lot of people feel like 
black men can't rest. It's like there's a joke going on when like they say people are like in a relationship or married yeah. that, you know, uh, the man is on a couch and his, and his lady comes in. He's like, oh, let me get up and do something. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we, can, we can rest. It's OK for us to rest. And that's what we as men, you know, Kylie talk about to end it out. Not only doing the stuff, family, but if your health and wealth is not it, you can't do none of this. You can't yeah. do none of this. Right. So my advice, Q, for you uh, and just you may already know this. And for the family, if you start young, that yeah. whole I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, you're going to be dead because if you don't yeah. sleep, <laughs> yeah. I'm die quickly. I'm just and it's a joke, but it's real, too. Right. And right. we have to balance rest and production. We have yeah. to balance that. Yes. There's always yes. work to do. There's always work to do. You can do as much as you can for the day. Rest. Get your seven, eight or nine hours, whatever that is. And start again tomorrow. It ain't going nowhere. It's not. It's not going nowhere. So again, take your rest and your recuperation and rejuvenation serious. Because as black men, they teach us to run ourselves into the ground, and then we have all these medical issues as in later in age. Yeah, it's just yeah. not productive. That's not love. That's not love. I don't care what exactly. anybody says. It's not love. You're not loving yourself. That's true. That's, true. That's very true. Like, just pace yourself, my brother, because. Real, real talk. I lost a tooth over it. I'm gonna just be real, family. I lost. I was, I was working so hard. I lost one of my my wisdom teeth because I was grinding my teeth at night. Mm. Wow. I had, I had to get it pulled. If it did cracked, and I had to get it pulled. So, ow. That's what pressure will do. I'm, and and Cal, I, I'm glad that you you mentioned that Q. Uh, for us being this age, Q, and to have you on as inspiration, and and pretty much from from my experience, I want to mention uh, two key things. Uh, that I'm sure is already uh, can, is a given, but I want to specify it. So with the information, uh, the creativity that these young people have, I can't stress enough how it's important to have copyrights, right? Because just oh like God. people yeah. will take, you know, idea, you're young. A lot of people, yeah, we'll take that idea and you're young. A, a, a lot of that comes with naive take, right? Because you're young, you don't know what's yeah. going on. But as a young person, the more you figure out what you want to do and you have these ideas that you're creating, make sure you copyright your ideas. Make sure you copyright yeah. your intellectual property so someone can't take your fresh ideas that you may have just came up with or put years of yeah. investment in and then capitalize yeah. and take it for themselves. So I want to make sure we specify that there's visual arts copyrights and there's text copyrights that you can file with the government less than $100, it covers you, whatever, and you can make residual income, or you can even sell that idea and make profit off that to create new ideas. So I want to emphasize that. And then the other thing I want to share with you, Q, is stay focused, my brother. I don't even have to say that to you because you're already on there. Uh, but like <laughs> like Kyle said, your mental health. Brother, make sure you pace yourself. Uh, I'm looking yes. forward to more conversations with you. I love the energy, yeah. man. So I yeah. want us, you know, Kyle and I are working on some stuff to build the community, yeah. to get brothers like you involved, to share your information, to share your ideas, to share your energy so we can build together. So the, the, the advice that I have for you, you, keep doing what you're doing, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep learning. And the, the, the wisdom that you show is listening to your elders. Right. Learning yes. and listening from your elders, man. Make sure because we learn from you. We learn from each other. Proud of you. Yes, yes sir. And I want another shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, want another shirt. I got you. I, I saw, got I saw, a, I saw black, a black love shirt. I want that one. That's the one. I want that one. The black love. OK. Yes. And I'm buying one, too. I got, I got you, Q. I mean, we're going to right support there. you. We buying you, bro. We buying your shirt, not, brother. Not yours on your body, but you know. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I got it. No, I got it. I got it. No, I got you. I'm fresh I'm, one. Um, I'm fresh. Yes, I'm. I'm gonna draw it up. I'm gonna ask because this will be our um our re-release that we're gonna have. So I'm a. Yeah. I'm gonna send y'all. Um, I can send y'all probably a. Um, we'll do it through DM because it hasn't been put on the website yet because we're gonna do a re-release of it. So, but okay. yes, I'm gonna get you. You guys will be one of the first people that has it. Ooh. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, final yeah. words, final words you want to leave us with you and your social media handle so people can find you and support what you're doing, brother. What you got to say? Yes, um, I would say we are at Politically Urban um, on Instagram. That's what our main um, feed is. I would tell people um, do not give up. Um, really believe in what you're doing, even if environment is telling you you know the knowledge of self, you know what you're worth. Um, you know that whatever you're doing, if you don't love it, right, 
um, you know you could be doing that passion that you really want. It doesn't mean it has to be, it's methodical. It, it's not black and white. It never is. But do not leave this earth with regrets. That's the worst thing because your time is your asset. Don't leave this worth. Go out and do it. And don't think you have to be the biggest, biggest, baddest thing to make success. Like there's no company in the world that services every demographic. Not one, not even the ones that are billion dollar companies. There are some people that don't even like searching on Google. That's why we have DuckDuckGo. I just want people to realize you don't have to like be this big mass. Like you could literally just be the best thing that comes out of where you're at because you can resonate in that area. If you guys go on YouTube, there's a clothing brand. If you type it in, um, the guy David uh, Scholes uh, with Social Proof, he interviewed them. It's called the $17 million clothing brand that you don't even know about. And I didn't even know about them until I saw this video. They're wow. from the South. They make a clothing brand. They make millions of dollars. And I didn't even heard of who they were. And I think that I forgot that the, the, the name was like Tune something. But I'm just saying, David Scholes. No. Okay. And, how, and, and we got Gucci. We got Louis. But again, like, yeah. And no one company can service every demographic. Whatever you're putting out, find your audience, find your people. It can happen. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, my brand means politically unified requires bond and nurture. That's what it politically mm. is. Yeah. And that's it. Follow us on Instagram. And stay tuned. We are keeping it ready. And if you are, if, if anybody's listening that can model, that wants to model, male and female, I mean, come out. You know, we're, we're trying to get the photo shoot before the end of the year and we're going to re revamp some things on the website. And yeah, like I'm down for support. And, you know, if anybody here wants to build, you know, stand me. I'm I'm open. <laughs> Thank you, Q. Man, yeah. He's he dropping gems on gym. Man, <laughs> I didn't know that part. The Urban Park family, he caught me off guard with that one. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> that, that, that's, 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 that's righteous right there. That's, something, that's dope. That's dope. Wow. So family, look, we could go on, but. You know, our time is a value. Like yeah. you said, time is an asset. And this brother got work to do. We got work to do. And you got work to do. Right? Yeah. But subscribe to this brother's page. Check out his fashion. Buy, support, promote, whatever they can to do. If you can't put no dollars in this man's pocket, you better promote that brand because this is something that we need to big up more so. Right? Yeah. It's not saying that you don't have to get the other stuff, the the, the other yeah. labels, but get this too. Get this yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? So you got the money. We got the resources. Do it. All right. We're going to put in our dollars for it because we believe in it. We want to support the brother. I'm always looking for brands that's that's different than the norm. That's promoting some positive, something that's putting stuff back into our community and not taking it out of the community. So, again, support this brother, completely urban. Q Williams, Quinnell Williams. You know what I'm saying? But we call him Q because we family now. Yes. So, yes. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that so much, man. All right. It's been a blast. Like, subscribe, share this video. Please donate if you can. Uh, Q, much love to you, brother. Thank you. You know, we support you, man. Anytime you're welcome back. I guess I, it was a pleasure. I appreciate it. And like I said, this won't be the last time. So we'll definitely go for part two. I'm all for it. Absolutely. Indeed, Thank bro. you so much. On the count of three, two, one, three, two, we're going to do the piece, right? We got to change that yeah. up, Cal. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> all right, so three, two, one, peace. peace.